Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the podcast. UFC 298 was this weekend and boy oh boy, that was first of all one heck of a card, second of all nobody likes seeing Alexander Volkanovsky unconscious like that. We'll get to that later. For now, let's go ahead and go over some of these some of these fights that we had on the prelims. We had some great fights on the prelims. Um, I, I know a lot of people who don't ro- watch the prelims, and I will never understand that because sometimes that's where the best fights are. Not all the time, but sometimes. And, you know, not in this case, but there were some great fights on the prelims. And it's kind of where you get to know um, the guys that are not just getting into the UFC, maybe have a few fights, but that's where you get to know them. It's where the meat and the potatoes of the whole ooh, of the whole organization is is on those prelims. It's who it's fun to watch a guy that's like maybe the first or second fight on the card, and then like two or three years later he's headlining a pay per view. That to me is awesome. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Danny Barlow defeats Josh Quinlan via TKO in the third round. That fight, that was a really good fight. The end of that fight, that should have been stopped way earlier. And I believe Jason Herzog was the one who was uh, calling that fight. Let's find out here real quick. Yeah, it was Jason Herzog. And he's usually pretty good about stopping fights. Doesn't ever stop one early for the most part. But he's usually a lot better of you know not stopping him. I thought it was a little bit late. He was defending himself he was getting back up but as soon as he stopped that fight you could tell dude was just absolutely done and uh Danny Barlow looked insane but that was a violent ending to a good fight excited to see where Danny Barlow ends up next and another another great fight was uh Min Yang uh, Zhang Min Yang uh he defeated um Brinson Ribeiro the first round, it says TKO on the official report. Let's be honest, he knocked him out. Zhang is a is one of those guys. You know, how I was just talking about. It's fun to see guys fight on the early prelims, and then and he wasn't on the early prelims. He was on the prelim prelims. But it's fun. This is one of those guys who you're gonna have to watch out for at 205. It is fresh blood in the 205 pound weight class, which is kind. Let's be honest, a little bit stagnant right now. Obviously, we have the UFC 300 main event. But this is some fresh fucking Chinese meat in this fuck in this division. Dude's now two and zero in the UFC. Two first round knockouts. He's fucking huge. He's huge. He's really fun to watch fight. I can't wait to see him fight again. That was a vicious, vicious combination to finish the fight. Finish it on the ground. Beautiful fight. Beautiful fight. And then we had Marcos Rodrigo de Lima defeated Junior Tafa via second round TKO. Those leg kicks, Junior Tafa, those calf, not even le- calf kicks. I guess that's a part of the leg. But those calf kicks he was taking, man. I've seen a lot of calf kicks. I've seen guys get finished with calf kicks, which we kind of did here. He, he, he went down in clear pain, but... um. I've seen a lot of guys get finished with calf kicks in the last two or three years, but for some reason, those specific ones that he was that Junior Tafa was getting hit with looked so bad. They looked like they hurt so bad. It looked like he was breaking his leg. I that's what I that's what it looked like to me. I don't know about what you guys thought it looked like, but I could not imagine getting hit by a guy that big. In the calf. And that's probably why it looked a lot worse than a lot of the other ones was because of how large Rodrigo de Lima is. But also, hats off to Junior Taffa. His brother, I don't know what happened to, to Justin Taffa. I don't know why he, I think he was sick or something. I don't know. I should probably know that if I'm going to be telling everybody about it. But neither here nor there. Um, but steps in on like 24 hours notice, 30 hours notice to go in and fight a monster. Like Rodrigo de Lima. So hats off to Junior Tafa. Fucking crazy. And then we had in the main, um, what's it called? The feature bout of the prelims. 
Main event. It's not the main event. Imagine if Amanda Lemos uh, had, and Mackenzie Dern headlined UFC 298 and it wasn't for a title. That'd be insane. Excuse me. Um, anyway, Amanda Lemos defeats Mackenzie Dern via unanimous decision. I thought it was a great fight. I really enjoyed it. A lot of the women's divisions get shit for, Oh, it's a boring fight. I don't want to watch the women fight. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Like, sir, I don't under- I, I will never understand that. I know some of them aren't as high level as some of the men's fights, but also, I mean, it's not like they're dog shit fights, you know what I mean? But this fight was really entertaining. So was the Miranda Maverick versus Andrea Lee fight on the uh, the first fight of the night. Um, Mackenzie Dern has so much success with her grappling. She needs to find a coach. I don't know who her coach is now. I know she was training with... J- I, I'm pretty sure she was training with... Jason Perillo for a long time, and I know Ruka's not really around anymore, so I don't know if Jason Perillo is still training her, but every time she would get in a grappling exchange, her jujitsu her jujitsu is so high level. That needs to be the focus of the game plan because I don't know if you guys saw what I saw in the beginning in the beginning of the fight in that first round. She looked exactly the same as she did when she fought um damn who she fought Jessica Andrade. All of her punches were looping and reaching it's like she's not setting anything up she's not throwing combos she's just throwing just big punches and with a with a girl like jessica andrage and even amanda lemos in that second round when she got hurt really bad she's throwing big looping punches and amanda's just coming down straight down the pipe it it just makes no sense why a lot of her games because the only time she really initiated any grappling exchanges not the only time but a lot of the time in this fight was when she was getting hurt and she was getting beat up. And then she would win these grappling exchanges. And then it needs to be the focus of her game plan. When you're a world champion jiu-jitsu black belt, if your game plan is not to get somebody to the ground, I don't understand that. I do not understand that. She's still got to work on her striking. She can be a world champion if she, if she changes up a few things. Who the fuck am I to say that? Let's be honest. I'm nobody. I'm a white belt in jiu-jitsu. I did Muay Thai for like four years. I've done Muay Thai for like four years. I'm terrible. Everybody can beat me up. I go to sparring. I get my ass kicked. I'm a nobody. But that's what I see. That's my opinion. You know what I mean? And I would love to see her. It's kind of like Ronda Rousey when she thought she could strike with Holly Holm, who's a boxing world champion. And a kickboxer when Ronda's a judo silver medalist in the Olympics. I don't know who's coaching Mackenzie Dern, but that needs to be the focus, I think, going forward. Especially with these last two fights. She took quite a beating these last two fights. Anyway, pay-per-view. Guys, this pay-per-view actually delivered. All right? It really did deliver. Except for the Ian Gary Jeff Neal fight, but um, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about Anthony Hernandez versus Roman Kopilov. Anthony Hernandez beat him second round submission, rear naked choke. Roman Kopilov is kind of like the boogeyman of the division, in my opinion. He is. I mean, he. Uh, let's just look at his last five fights. Four fights. Four fight win streak, all knockout or TKO. I know he's not fighting high level competition. This is his first fight with somebody inside the top 15. I think Anthony Hernandez is ranked number 15. But who wants to fight that guy? And hats off to Roman. I'm pretty sure he took this fight on like two weeks' notice, by the way. But a guy like Anthony Hernandez, who is just time after time, I think Hernandez was the underdog in this fight. I can't remember. That's a lie. He wasn't. He lied. I lied. I'm sorry. I lied to you guys. Hand up for accountability. Um, but I didn't think Hernandez was going to win this fight. I thought Kapilov was going to do what he's done to everybody in the last four fights and finish him. But Hernandez has proved time and time again when he defeat, he beat Hadolfo Vieira, who is a world champion jiu-jitsu black belt, as a blue belt, submitted him, took him into deep water, and took him to somewhere he's never been before. Anthony Hernandez is a fucking dog. He's now on a five-fight win streak, three submissions, one knockout, one decision. Dude just keeps getting better. I love a guy who 
just doesn't settle. You know what I mean? Because he, he defeats Adolfo Vieira, you think, oh, now he's going to be like, oh, I'm going to fucking submit everybody. I'm just going to rely on that. Nope. Dude just keeps getting better every single fight. I always count him out for some reason. He's going to be one of those guys that I just cannot count out anymore. I'm really excited to see who he fights next. Um, probably a guy in the top 10, hopefully, maybe, you know, 12 or 11 or 12. I don't know where he's ranked now, but we'll see. Great, great fight, though. And then we had Marab defeating Henry Cejudo via unanimous decision. Marab is now on a 10-fight win streak. So if he doesn't get a title shot next, if he doesn't face the winner of Cheeto versus Sean O'Malley, I don't know. I don't know what we do. I don't it, it wouldn't make any sense. You know what I mean? And as far as Henry Cejudo goes, I don't know I, What I said last week before this fight was this Henry Cejudo retired he retired in his prime. And it sucks cuz he that that streak he was on when he became double champ when he defeated Marlon Marias the way he did he was as hot as you can possibly be then he defeats Dominic Cruz and then he retires now you're gone for 4 years almost you you fought what was it like last October when he lost to Aljermaine when was that that was in October was it that was last May so it was like almost a year ago eh, 6 7 months whatever give or take but it it just sucks. And now he, he's coming back and he's just, he's 37 years old. And as you know, as a lot of people know, these lighter weight classes, it just doesn't, the older they get, it just, they don't hold up. The heavy weight classes, for some reason, it works. You know, you have Glover Teixeira. Usually the heavyweights are a little older other than John Jones. A lot of the time, not all the time, but, you know, some of the time. But he robbed himself of the greatest years he had. You know, 34, 33 he would have been if he continued on that run after 2020. Because they were fighting. You know, that was the first, when he fought Cruz, that was the first fight uh, from coming back from COVID. So then they started doing all the Apex stuff. So he could have kept fighting. It would have sucked, you know, during the pandemic to have to do that. But... He could have been, he could have defended the title a few times. I mean, the division wasn't super stacked back then. I mean, if Dominic Cruz is fighting for the title in his first fight back, it's not, it's not a stacked division. He could have probably defended the title three, four times. And then went up to 45 if he wanted to. And then he probably would have lost to 45. I don't think he would have defeated Volkanovsky. But he just robbed himself of, himself of the greatest years of his fight career. And it sucks. For me as a fan, because I love Henry Cejudo, I don't. He does. He gets a lot of hate, rightfully so. He's kind of cringe. He fired his coach on camera, then rehired him. Insisted it wasn't a bit. It looked like a bit. I was fucking weird. Don't know what that was all about. But Olympic gold medalist in wrestling, double champion, defeats uh, Demetrius Johnson, who has like I think it was the longest reigning title reign in UFC history. Great fight. His next fight, TJ Dillashaw. Dillashaw says he's coming down to 125 to kill the division. So Hudo knocks him out in under a minute. Then goes up to 135. Beats the brakes off of Marlon Marias. Not in the first round, but don't worry about the first round, you know. <laughs> um, comes back, beats Dominic Cruz, then retires. If he didn't retire and he kept on that run, it would have been a fucking insane run. And it just sucks to see him retire early the way he did. Anyway, now I assume he's retired. Maybe maybe he'll come back to 145. But who knows? We'll see what happens with uh, Henry Cejudo. If he's retired, happy retirement. I know he's got a couple kids now, so good for him. Ian Gary versus Jeff Neal. I'm not going to lie, guys. I didn't watch this fight. I worked on Saturday, and I fell asleep during this fight not because it was boring I just I fell asleep I heard it was a close fight split decision obviously for Ian Gary 
I heard a lot of people had Jeff Neal winning. I got to go back and watch it and find out. While we're on the subject of Ian Gary, let's talk about what I think. What I think you know. Him and his wife, the whole drama with that, everyone talking shit. Let's be honest. It's none of our damn business. I know it's fun to talk shit online. I've done it. I even talked about it. And then I I thought about it. I hear him talking about... I don't know what he was on less, less last week during his media obligations, but he was saying, like... So his his wife's son... And her her ex husband. So it's his. Okay, let me let me talk. Let me say it again. His ex his wife's ex husband is a nutritionist, like a very very good world renowned nutritionist. So those two have those two have a child together. His wife and her ex husband. What what he wants what he wanted to do was be like, hey, you're a nutritionist. You have a son. I don't want to keep you away from your son. Why don't you be my nutritionist? Travel around with us, come with your child, and be a family. And let's be honest, that sounds fucking nice. Ian's a good dude. I mean, there's a lot of men out there who couldn't handle that. And everybody wants to come online, talk shit, say he's a cuck, say all this, say that, say his wife's bet fucking everybody. It's like, and I know his wife wrote that fucking book, that How to Become a Wag book. Not a good look. But at the end of the day, it's none of our damn business. And people are getting way, way too fucking comfortable talking about people's families, especially online. It's none of our business. Ian Gary is doing the right thing. He's co parenting, he's bringing his son, his uh, stepson's father along with them. So he doesn't miss anything in his son's life. And I think that's fantastic. And I'm tired of people talking shit about it. It's fucking rude. I Like I said, I've done it. I'm I'm guilty of it. But I thought a lot about it. And I don't think it's, it's it, it wasn't the right thing to say. And it's not the right thing to do. So, and, and by the way, if any, if any one of these groups of people talking shit to Ian Gary I've seen online, like in person, mean like, fuck you, you are, you're a cuck, whatever. If there was only like one or two of them, they wouldn't be fucking doing that. Ian Gary's fucking giant. How big is Ian Gary? Let's take a fucking look. He's a big dude. He's a big guy at 170 pounds. Yeah, he's fucking 6'3", and it says 170, but he's probably fucking 200 pounds. It, it, it's just, that's it's everything that's wrong with internet culture, and it's annoying. That's all I'm going to say about that, though. But not a great fight, not super exciting, split decision. A lot of people had Jeff Neal winning, but I'll go back and watch it. We'll find out for myself. You know, it was a good fight, though. Robert Whitaker versus Paulo Costa. Whitaker defeats Costa via unanimous decision. I don't know what's next for Robert Whitaker. You know what I mean? He he lost to Drickus. He's lost to Adesanya twice. Beat Costa. Costa. What do you do with what do you do with Whitaker? I mean, he's still very young. I think he's only like fucking thirty two. He's been in the UFC for a long time, but he's not. He's not. Oh yeah, he's thirty three. He's still kind of in his prime. I mean, you could put him against a, in a title shot against Drickus next. I would. I would like to see it. I know he got kind of manhandled the last time they fought, but Robert's very good of, of coming back with a better game plan. You saw it when he fought out of Sonya. When uh. He got the break speed off of him in that first fight versus Adesanya and came back, and a lot of people thought he won. I think it was a split decision. Was it a split decision? Let's find out. No, it was unanimous. But a lot of people thought uh, Whitaker won in that fight. I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Adesanya versus Drickus again. I know the first fight was boring, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. And also, what do you do next if you're Paulo Costa? I mean, he's... He's three and one in his last four. He lost to Izzy, Marvin Vittori, beat Luke Rockhold. That was a close fight too, by the way. And then he just lost to Robert Whitaker. I don't know what you do next for him. I'll tell you what though. 
he looked really good in this fight. We haven't seen Paulo Costa take a fight this serious in a long time, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think Costa's he's going to be fine, but I don't know what, what what you do with him next either. That brings us to our main event, guys. Ilya Teporia versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Everything in my heart really wanted Alex to win this fight, but leading up to this fight, I didn't pick against Al- against Alex. By the way, it's 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 one of the, there's a few fighters I don't pick against. I I don't count out Thug Rose because when I did, she knocked out Whaley with a head kick. And then I don't pick against Volkanovski because I've done that before. Didn't turn out. What are you going to do? And then, uh, yeah. It, it, everything leading up to this just felt like Ilya Tapori was going to win. He felt so confident the whole the whole week leading up. He has that, that documentary coming out, that Road to the Title documentary. Alexander Volkanovsky, he's held the title for so long, he's getting a hold, he's just coming off that knockout against um, Islam Makachev in October, November, December, January, it's three months since he got head kicked, and Ilya is just young and hungry, and his boxing's fucking so good, he's so fast, It, it just felt like it was time for the title to change hands, and it did. And that's good for the division. But I am so sad that Alexander Volkanovsky lost. But the fight game's brutal, man. It's a brutal, brutal job. If you if if you lose your your job in this game, you get a brain injury. It sucks. But congrats to Ilya Taporia. I don't know if you guys saw. That video of his family reacting to him winning, that was fantastic. I love to see stuff like that. But also, like I said, it makes that division wide open at 145. If Max wins against Justin Gaethje, or even if he loses, does he come back down to 145 and fight Taporia? I would love to see that fight. What, what's Max Holloway going to do? You know that meme? Where's Kevin? Where's Kevin? What's his fucking name? Where's Kevin Lee fit into all this? Where's Max Holloway fit into all of this? For real. I would love to see him back down to 145. It's probably some... I can't... I don't know who's... I mean, you could do Brian Ortega and the winner of that versus... Who... He fights some... Who's he fight this weekend? Jair Rodriguez. You could do the winner of that. But I would love to see Max Holloway, personally. All right. Oh, I... I completely forgot. We have the PFL... No, not PLF. The PFL championship fights this weekend. I completely forgot. That's on Saturday, I think. That's a that's actually a fun card. I don't know what they do after this. I don't I know they merged. I don't really know, know what's going on after this. But let me read you off these fights. These are gonna be some really fun fights. Clarissa Shields is fighting a nobody. That'll be fine, I guess. Well, then we got Henry Corrales versus Aaron Pico. That's a rematch. Do you remember that when Pico got knocked out? Then we got Clay Collard versus AJ McKee. That's a fun fight. Tiago Santos and Yoel Romero. Can't wait for that one. That's going to be exciting. I know Yoel's old, but I still love watching him fight. And then Vadim Nemikov is fighting at heavyweight versus Bruno Capoloza. I don't know who that guy is. I'm going to be honest with you. And then we got a catchweight fight, Jason Jackson, who's the title holder over in Bellator at, I think, 70. Uh, he's fighting Ray Cooper. And then we get, if you don't know who Ray Cooper is, he who did he knock out? He knocked out some dude that fought, in, wasn't Derek Brunson? I can't, I'm pretty sure it was Derek Brunson. No, who the fuck is that? There we go. Why can't I find this fucking thing? I mean, he's beat... 
Oh, he just lost to Derek Brunson. Who did he knock out? Chris Curtis. That's who he beat. Yeah, he knocked out Chris Curtis back in 2019. That was a long time. That was a little while ago. Beat Roy McDonald. Just lost to Derek Brunson, but that's a fun fight. If you guys don't know who uh, who those two guys are. And then we got Gabriel Braga versus Patricio Pitbull at Featherweight. That's a fun fight. Then we got Impa Kasagane. Is my nose bleeding? We're good. Versus Johnny Eblen. Johnny Eblen is a bad motherfucker. People are going to find out who Johnny Eblen is. And then we got Renan Ferreira versus Ryan Bader. Both those guys, title holders. So is Johnny Eblen and Impa Kasagane. But that'll be, that'll be fun. Anyway, um... All year we're doing our MMA picks for the year, so I go to Verdict. I go to the Verdict app. If you guys don't know what that is, go download it. It's a fun app. It's not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I just love it. I've been using it for like six years, five years maybe. Um, I pick all the main card picks or whatever, you know, whatever's on the app. It's usually just the main card picks. And then I tell you guys my record. This year, so far, we're 10-16. and 16. It's looking bad, looking real bad. Been picking with my heart this year, and that's not the way to go. I gotta pick with my brain. Okay, you, you gotta pick with your brain. I would do live picks for you, but I'm using my phone to record this. So, off to the side of the screen, I'm gonna show you a live feed. You're seeing it right now of me picking the fights. That way, I don't cheat. Looks good, doesn't it? Probably not. It's probably gonna look bad next week when it's all red because I didn't get any right. But that is it for me today, guys. Enjoy watching those picks. They're probably done by now. Probably not. We're going to stay live for a minute because <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to take me to pick these fights. It could take an hour. could take 30 seconds. I don't know how much longer it's going to be. By the way, I like to end every podcast with this. If a guy tells you he's got picks, he's got good picks for MMA, and he wants to charge you for him, that guy is a scammer, that guy is a liar, and he should be locked up and thrown away because it doesn't work that way, okay? Never works that way. Usually pick the favorites. If you guys look and see who's the favorite, probably pick him. Last year they should, they had a graphic of how many favorites won. It was like a, like 398 to like 110. So if you, if you just pick favorites, probably going to – end up a winner anyway that's it for me today guys don't trust the scammers telling you they got all the mma picks and we'll see you next week peace